Welcome to the video lecture series on sociology and today we will be talking about social stratification from the chapter 2 of class 11 textbook and the chapter is terms, concepts and their use in sociology. When we talk about social stratification, it is a form of inequality and it refers to the structured inequalities between groups in society in terms of you know access to material or rewards. Now, when we talk about you know social stratification, every individual is subjected to social stratification in their life, whether you know it is uh, the em employment or you know the health services, whatever is there, you know all the things are distributed unequally and in a very systematic manner. So, f uh, I mean, it's a form of social inequality, and it refers to the distinction of social groups that are ranked one above the other in terms of factors such as prestige and wealth. And when we talk about social stratification, there are you know four principles of uh, social stratification. One is that it is present in every society. When we talk about social stratification, whether it is a traditional society or a modern society, it is there in all the societies and it continues from one generation to another. You know, the different classes, different castes which we talk about, this continues from generation to generation, though it keeps changing, but it takes a lot of time to change. So, it passes from one generation to another. Then social stratification is universal but variable. See, it exists everywhere, but you know the kind of inequalities which are there, the type of inequalities are there, they are different in different societies. And then the social stratification involves beliefs as well as inequality. You know, the society is divided, divided into different statas based on the inequalities and also based on beliefs. So, these are the basic four principles of social stratification. Now, let us talk about the system of stratifications which are there in the world and uh, the, there are four basic system of uh, stratification. One is slavery, caste, state and class. Now, if we talk about slavery, I mean it is almost eradicated, but still we talk about slavery because we know that you know there are certain discriminations which are still there and you know in one way or the other it still exists in some of the societies. Then there is a caste and uh, state. A state is, you know, like when the society is divided on the basis of, of, of the land owned by, you know, the different group of people and class. So, first let us uh, come on to the slavery. Slavery uh, is an extreme form of inequality and it is legitimized by the ideology that one group of individuals existed to serve another group, which means that the one individual can literally own the other individual. And if we talk about slavery, it existed sporadically at many times at, at many places. Now, the two examples of, you know, slavery at different point of time in history, one is the ancient Greece and Rome and other one is the southern states of, uh, you know, USA in 18th and 19th century. Now, there was a difference between the kind of slavery which was there in ancient Greece and Rome and also in, you know, the uh, southern states of USA. As a formal institution, the slavery, uh, right now, I mean, it is not there, it has been eradicated. There were a number of, uh, you know, issues and there were a number of movements related to that. But still in one form or the other, it still exists, you know, in, um, you know, the different societies. Now, let us come on to the second system of stratification that is caste. In caste stratification system, individual's position totally depends on the status attributes ascribed by birth. And this is a very rigid and closed stratification system in the world and here the position and status of a person is determined by the birth. And when we talk about India, in India, in traditional India, different caste formed hierarchy of social precedence and each position in caste structure was defined in terms of its purity or pollution relative to others. The belief was that most pure, that is, that was the Brahmin priestly caste, are superior to others. Now, if we talk about caste system in India, I mean, at one point of time it was very rigid, but uh, it has gone a considerable change, and the changes was brought about by the urbanization. 
but when we talk about change changes did take place but the discrimination was not so easy to do away with but there is you know a lot of discrimination based on you know the caste system which still exists in society but the working of democracy has affected the caste system now the various caste uh, i mean they have emerged as the various interest group and they have actually gained strength and uh, due to you know the democracy you know the different castes are you know given lot of importance and they have a strong role to play in the indian democracy nowadays so the entire system has changed but it has taken a lot of time to uh, change uh, and it is a uh, changing as we said you know when we talk about sociology you know nothing is static when we talk about society nothing is static and it keeps evolving now let's come on to the class system and the class system of stratification when we uh, talk about this type of stratification it's more open and social mobility can occur uh, social mobility means that the movement from you know one class to another class which is not there in the caste system or which is very difficult in the caste system when we talk about classes there is a chance that the individual can move from one class to another so which says that the, so, uh, there is a possibility of social mobility so the class is referred to as a hierarchical distinction which exists between individuals of groupings within the society uh, like middle class working class or upper class an individual class may be determined by his or her occupation income or wealth so this is uh, like about class and the class is a very open system of uh, stratification and in uh, india and world over like this is one of the major way of stratification in society and since we have actually discussed about you know the two sociologists and their work karl marx and weber for the class also will have a little a discussion on their work and how they have defined class and how they have used class uh, for the social stratification now the marx theory of social class are defined by what relation they have to the means of production which means that you know the class is divided into two different groups the one is the owners of means of production which is like the owners of land and factories and the second is the owner of nothing but their labor so these are the two different classes and uh, the karl marx talked about these two classes and the conflict between these uh, two classes and he said that there are two groups which is capitalist uh, that is the class which owns the means of production and the working class that sells their labor for wages so these are the two groups two classes uh, according to marx uh, theory uh, the conflict theory now according to marx weber uh, he uh, defined social stratification and he said that the social stratification can happen uh, keeping in view the three major points in a society one is the class which is the economic dimension you know how the people uh, are earning and you know the income of those particular people second is the status which is the social dimension you know what kind of status they occupy in society and the third one is the party that is the political dimension according to this he said that the uh, you know the different groups can be formed in society and this is his uh, way of describing and you know uh, telling like uh, this is how the social stratification happens in a society now let's have a look at you know how the functional theory of marx weber and the conflict theory of uh, you know karl marx differs in uh, you know stratification when he talks about inequality in functionalism you know it motivates people to fulfill positions that are needed for the survival of the whole this is that you know there are different positions and you know functionalism theory as it said and we discussed earlier also it says that you know the different parts of the society they work in coordination with each other so if in case you know there is one particular part which is vacant or uh, so that can be fulfilled and the conflict theory says that the inequality results when those with the most resources exploit others this is what conflict theory says now uh, for the class structure according to functionalism theory differentiation is essential for a cohesive society they said that you know if there is a differentiation uh, you know there are different uh, sort of people who are working different jobs so it is very essential for a cohesive society and the conflict theory says that the different groups struggle over resources and compete for social advantage this is the difference between you know the functionalism theory and the conflict theory as far as the class structure is concerned now let's talk about status and role now these status and role these are the twin concepts and uh, they are many a times used interchangeably now when we talk about status uh, it's a position in a society or in a group now status is a special position with defined rights and duties assigned to these positions 
for example when we talk about mother right the mother has you know certain roles and responsibilities she has certain prerogatives so we can say that you know uh, you know it's a one particular status in a society when we talk about role uh, role is very dynamic and it's a behavioral aspect of status you know role is something which you play and the status is something which you occupy in a society now status is an institutionalized role it is a role that has uh, become regularized standardized and formalized in the society at large or in any of the specific association or society now if we talk about status in traditional society and modern society what is the difference when we talk about traditional societies these are the smaller societies simpler societies so in those societies there were very few kinds of status were there but when we talk about the modern societies there are number of you know status uh, we actually as an individual occupy different types of status at different point of time so which means that you know any individual at any point of time they occupy multiple status you know the different status the status as a mother father grand grandparents status as a student teachers you know, these are the different status and the status we occupy and these are the multiple status i mean it's not that at one point of time we'll have only a one status as one particular person and this multiple status is known as the status set this is what we call status set and there is a another concept and another term which is status sequence now what exactly is status sequence status sequence is like when we talk about you know a role of an individual as a child uh, as a son as a father as a grandfather so what is happening here that the status is changing but is it is changing sequence sequentially so we call it a status sequence and when we talk about status you know there are ascribed status and we talked about you know this in caste also because ascribed status are the status you know which are you know there by birth and you know it are actually assumed in voluntarily like we don't have any control over this which includes you know the caste race age you know it just happens right and the another one is the achieved status you know what is achieved status the achieved status is something we achieve over a period of time and we achieve it you know as per you know what we do in our life our achievements our academic contributions and it's based on our choice so this is how we achieve uh, you know the dif different status and this is known as achieved status and then there is another concept which come in when we talk about sociology and when we talk we are talking about the different concepts and terms related to sociology and that is the prestige you know the prestige is something you know uh, which is attached to a status it's a value of your work value added to your status that is what is called prestige so these are the different terms which we use in sociology and as a sociologist and as a student of sociologist you must understand all these terms and there is a huge differentiation because as a student at times when we talk about class when we talk about caste when we talk about status when we talk about you know the prestige and uh, the different things we uh, you know use them interchangeably but this is not so you know each word each term has its own meaning each term and each word is used in a different context now when we talk about all these things uh, there is another thing which comes in is that you know uh, there is a social control also when we talk about uh, you know all these issues uh, there is a social control which is there in the society which is very very important and uh, regarding social control uh, we'll be talking in our next uh, lecture Uh, that will be based on the social control as of now we talked about you know the various uh, systems of stratification we talked about caste we talked about class and we talked about slavery also though it's uh, eradicated but still it exist in one form of or the other so that's all for now and as a student of sociology as we keep saying in all our lectures that keep observing and keep sharing your findings whatever you do whatever you study and if you want to initiate any debate you can always share your observations on the google group which we have created for you thank you very much